in the hood. They call me Mr. Spooktacular because I'm always reading the most spooky books. This time, it was no different. It was In the Tall Grass, Mr. Spooky Book by Stephen King and his buddy Joe Hill. It was really spooky and I want to talk about it. I absolutely rushed to read this book when I heard about the new movie coming out on Netflix and I've also watched that movie so I do have a review for both of those items coming up in the very near future. Hopefully this book review goes up tomorrow and then the movie review goes up the day after tomorrow. Ooh, you guys know I'm recording it the day before. In the book review, I will be solely basing my review upon the book, which is actually a novella or a short story. I don't know, the, the copy that I got was kind of weird fonted, so I don't know exactly what it is. But in the movie review, I will be getting an actual review that compares both of these items, both the book and the movie, to tell you what I think is the strength of both of them and the weaknesses, comparing them in general. So I do want to get on with this review and put out a really short review so that you understand my position on the book before I jump into the movie. Like I said, this is an actually spooky book these kind of things don't come along often and it's very rare for me to personally feel scared in an actual book but this time of course it is Stephen King you gotta give it to him he's just crazy at this stuff I've seen this word thrown around a lot on Goodreads and I think it's an extremely accurate description of the horror that you feel while reading this book and it is the word primal because the fear that you feel while reading this book isn't just a fear of oh I don't know it's it's the unknown I don't know what to do but it's the fear of this is something that every human, by nature, by evolution, is afraid of because it's a terrifying concept to be lost in tall grass, unable to get home, unable to escape it, starvation, thirst, just being lost, being available to be destroyed by the nature. It's so scary to feel such a thing, to feel like you're trapped in an open space. It's, it's really terrifying. So in short, it is one of those Stephen King books that's legitimately scary. I'll say it once, I'll say it again. I've read a lot of Stephen King books, 25, not a lot, but a good amount. And I know that I'm very, very rarely scared by books. I can't say that many of his books have scared me. Even It, even The Stand, even Pet Cemetery. Pet Cemetery kind of creeped me out. And Revival, that really full-blown scared me for about a minute while I read it. But nothing else has done the trick. In the Tall Grass breaks that streak. And the reason is that in this situation, the emotion is really, really pulled out. The visceral atmosphere of what's going on does not have to be crazy good, but it has to be good enough that the way that the characters are fearing, the way, the way that they are fearing for their lives, that is such a strong motivator for us to feel fear while reading this book. So it is essentially really, really scary. Other than that really, really big important point, there isn't too much to talk about in terms of the book, but there are a couple things that I want to touch on. For example, the plot. What's interesting about this plot for me is the way that it progresses, the way it, it's really, really vague right at the start of the book and then gets more specific and more specific, which really kind of feels weird because it's not a very natural thing for us to feel. Usually we start specific, we get vague, and then we get specific again. But in this situation, we start with a very dreary, honestly kind of boring beginning that's extremely vague about the main characters, literally exposition, talking about who these characters are, what their relationship is to each other, and we literally, it's one of the worst openings I've seen in a Stephen King book. The thing about it though, is that this is a very, very short story, and because of that, it, it doesn't really matter because it's such a short amount of time that you get a couple of pages of exposition and you understand everything that you need to know and then you dive right into the story with everything that you absolutely understand and it's just brilliant. Because in normal situations, when you have exposition that much, you really make it feel like there's not much plot going on. But considering the size of this exposition and the amount of return that we gained in return for reading that exposition, the benefit from that is so much better. And I think that most authors would feel really, they wouldn't feel very comfortable doing that because it's one of the main rules. Don't be, uh, don't have too much exposition. But in this situation, it worked out so well because they were not too afraid to try it. It's a very simplistic story. There isn't too much going on, but as things go further and further into the plot, we do start to feel a little bit of confusion because not everything is explained as per usual. But in this situation, I just feel like a lot of stuff that really would have made us scared, that would have made us feel like, okay, I understand, and that is what's scary. 
most of that isn't even there. We just have the unknown, which is within the tall grass that's scary. And the tall grass itself, although it's one of the scariest things, there is something deeper in there that's supposed to be more primarily horrifying, and I didn't find that too scary, just because of the lack of answers and because of the amount of confusion within that entire plotline. So in general, I did find the whole overarching plot really really scary i didn't really find the specific instances of the middle plots of the of the smaller plot lines very scary at all but one of my favorite parts about this book is how it ended the climax itself was extremely extremely grotesque and that's the best word i can use for it because it's not scary other than it is really really scary to to imagine watching it's such an it's such a scary concept that it doesn't scare you that it grosses you out because what happens at the climax is not for the faint of heart. It, it's really not. I was having trouble reading it. I was having trouble uh, watching it on the movie, which I'll get into next time. But it's such a really, really weird concept to see and imagine that I, I, I was just unable. But the thing is, it worked because it was, it was exactly what Stephen King and Joe Hill were trying to do. And because of that, because it's such a, such a strong, specific way of ending the book, I... I absolutely loved it. You do not get this kind of stuff anywhere else, and that is the kind of Stephen King I am here for. By the end of the book, we do kind of get a little bit of a cliffhanger, and I, I'm not exactly sure I enjoyed how it ended the book, because it ended the book with basically another plot line starting, but we know how that's gonna end. But it, we only show how it's being started. And to me, I, in all honesty, I don't think it's that great, because I don't think that they, they put enough effort into ending it. But at the same time, I can't exactly imagine any other way to end a book like that there I, I can't imagine anything else that you could do to finish it off so in my opinion i'll leave it at that it's an it's, the ending was sufficient for what it was the beginning was exposition that i hated but ultimately it paid off because of how short it was and how much we got in return and overall in this story i've I've been legitimately scared. And that is, is just one of those things that you do not get anywhere else. And so for me personally, I thought that that scary amount, that the amount of detail that they put into the climax, the amount of all those small little subtle things that just made the atmosphere so provocative and, and scary to me, all of those things put together, I wanna give this book a five out of five because of how absolutely wonderful it is. It is Stephen King at his best. Joe Hill, my first introduction to him, absolutely wonderful. I love that kind of stuff. So that's all for this review. I do have a movie review coming out tomorrow or sometime in the near future. I have also begun Oathbringer if you care to know about that. Doctor Sleep is complete. I will be reviewing that next week or something like that. I'll get to it very, very soon. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.